putting the last, say, ten seconds of this episode aside, this was really cute and funny for the most part. <laughs> yes, it was. I mean, until the last ten seconds make you scream what the fuck at your computer. <laughs> I suppose so. My favorite bit of foreshadowing in this episode is the fact that on the terrible movie that Stephen Gregor watched at the very beginning, the aliens that are abducting the cows clearly have diamond patterns on their ship. <laughs> Yeah. Best foreshadowing. At this point, it's evolved into five shadowing. That is how next level Steven Universe is. Yes, absolutely. So this is Steven's dream. Am I the only one who wanted to be called I Dream of Steven? <laughs> oh. I mean, it would fit more than most of their title references. Yeah, but if it fit, then they wouldn't use it as a title reference. True. But that is how Steven Universe rolls. Yeah. So in this episode, uh, Steven's dream, Steven has a dream. The end. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, he has this weird dream in a field. Eddie ends up waking up with tears in his eyes, and it's all very weird, as per usual, I guess. Normal day in Steven's life. And at first, it's kind of confusing and vague, and he tries to talk with Greg about if Rose ever talked about Pink Diamond, but Greg makes it apparent that she never, they never really talked that much about uh, things that happened in the past. But then Stephen ends up that night having the same dream again, this time ended up seeing the palanquin, or palanquin. I, I or think palanquin. they end up settling on palanquin. As the pronunciation? So the pelican. <laughs> I, I'm I'm reasonably sure that was not it. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So yeah, they end up seeing the pelican. <laughs> and uh, they obviously recognize it from Buddy's book, so Connie brings that over. <laughs> so that episode had a point. Beyond <gasps> the line thing. Hooray! <laughs> I, I, by the way, minor thing, I loved... Of all the things to do a callback of, they have just, Connie, just thrown everything off the table again. That she loves knocking everything off the table just just so much. Yeah. Thank God they don't have any priceless uh, uh, artifacts on there. Now, if you're going to bring in a big book with, like, major plot import, uh, you don't just gently set it on a table. You sweep everything off and you slam it down. Yes, that's the way to, to do it. Just to show that you truly appreciate how incredibly important this book is. So they try to. So Stephen tries to ask uh, the Crystal Gems about that, but Amethyst is unaware. Uh, Pearl refute is trying to pretend she doesn't know about it, more or less. <laughs> I'm pretending badly. And Garnet is desperately trying to convince Stephen not to look in anything into that, to the point of. Making Steven do the opposite. Because he's <laughs> terrible at this. That was also a great sequence. Oh no, I made it more interesting! Uh, <laughs> it's great. But they end up having this argument over it, and eventually Steven leaves with his dad to try to see if they can find it. It's actually in Korea, so they all end up calling Andy, of all people, to fly to Korea. Yay, that episode also had a point. Hooray! So, after having some wacky fun in Korea... As you do. They end up finding the uh, area where it's located on the map they found, and uh, they end up hopping a fence, and when they see the palanquin, it's a bit different than what they remember, what Stephen remembers, in that it's not destroyed and it's blue. And then out of nowhere, we find Blue Pearl... With blue diamond, of all people. Of all gems. Gem people. And then the episode ends while you're still trying to figure out what the fuck just happened. Jeeple? Thames? How would you combine gem people? I, I think you just say gems. Of all gems. Just, of all people. Frickin' blue diamond. Just blue diamond. It's just there. Like, what? So then, when uh, Blue Pearl notices that someone is around, 
Greg uh, appears out of the uh, bushes to try to talk to them. He tries to sympathize with the fact that Blue Diamond lost Pink Diamond, Greg lost Rose, but conveniently leaving out who it is for obvious reasons. Yeah. And because uh, Blue Diamond thinks the cluster is still around, she thinks that, if nothing else, she can save one more person from this near planet that's about to be destroyed. So she end up, ends up grabbing Greg, going to her giant hand ship, and then flying far away, just warping immediately away from the Earth. And Steven can do nothing about it. Garnet then appears, apologizes for not doing anything, and then says to get him back, we'll have to go to space. Ah, oh, that is how you start a Steven bomb. Yes. Yes, it is. Holy shit. I- I'm gonna have to save talk about Blue Diamond for last, because oh my god, I have so much to say about dude Blue Diamond. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, I, have, I, I haven't at this point seen the last three episodes of it. I, I will keep it limited then. <laughs> but just specifically about Blue Diamond in this episode. That's the beginning, where Greg just casually reminds us that he's still stupidly rich in the background and he's just bought himself a very shiny new watch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, stupidly rich, because he decided he needed to buy a watch in nowadays. Yep. Do people even buy watches anymore? I mean, I just bought a watch, but that's because I have to for my teaching job, and it's only <laughs> like £20, it's not golden and shiny. But it tells me the time, and it turns out it glows in the dark, which I only found out by surprise when I was adjusting the time, and I startled myself so much I nearly fell off my chair. Because <laughs> I, I guess I'm, I'm that easy to startle these days. Shiny watch will do it. That's the most surprising thing ever. Shiny watch! <gasps> I mean, it's been like ten years since I've owned a watch. I'm not sure I ever did. But you're not allowed to just pull out your phone to check the time when you're teaching a class of children. Because then they think they can have their phones too, and then it all breaks down and it's anarchy. But Greg doesn't teach, I think he just bought a shiny watch because he could. Yeah. Though to be fair, he's probably one of the few people who I could see not realizing that you could just tell time with your with a phone. <laughs> True. Also, didn't he? Also, I think uh, he gave away the iPad to Stephen to Peridot. If yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah, he gave it to Stephen and gave it to Peridot, who I haven't seen it with that lately. Huh. But I was like, my original thought when Stephen kept having these dreams of pink flowers and the destroyed palanquin and crying, I was wondering if, like, Maybe he's seeing some memories of Rose Quartz's? Yeah, that's that's exactly what I thought it was. I mean, that is the obvious conclusion, because, like, I think just because, like, why else would there be this super serious scene of someone crying in a field when, like, it would, it would just feel kind of, like, that just makes the most sense, that, like, especially if it's supposed to be, like, an important episode, like, oh, I guess maybe it's a memory of something bad with Rose, okay. Well, I mean, it's the first thing he sees is pink flowers, and the, the immediate association for that is rose quartz. And then he sees the destroyed pink palanquin, and I'm thinking, maybe he's remembering, like, feelings of regret or sorrow for what she had to do to, Ro- to pink diamond. Because I'm just like, that, that palanquin is exactly like blue diamonds and garnet's flashback, but it's pink! It had to be pink diamonds! Ah! <laughs> and, yeah, and also, you know... I think when when he asks Greg about um, Rose Quartz, first I laugh quite a bit at Greg's line, we both made mistakes when we were young, I thought Disco was coming back, she started a war. So I'm like, I mean, you were wrong about Disco, <laughs> that's but that's the... still not an equal level of mistake. <laughs> that's... <laughs> not... that, was a, that was a fantastic <laughs> line. <laughs> <laughs> they're just they're not quite the same thing, Greg, honey. They're they're not. They're just not. But he also mentions that Rose regretted the war, thought it was a mistake. So I wondered if like is he crying because he feels some regret of Rose Quartz's? Like are we getting in touch with Stephen's inner Rose Quartz? And I mean ultimately that is not the direction we took here, but I'm not complaining. But yeah, they got because instead 
Bonnie's book is back, and I just immediately knew the gems, even before the gems got back, it's like, they're not going to want to talk about this, are they? Yeah. They're really not. And they did not. So you know what, I, what is actually my favorite part of the episode was that scene in particular? And this is this is kind of an interesting contrast because we're doing the Teen Titans vlog uh, for I believe it was Divine and Conquer specifically. Didn't we talk about before how much we hate unjustified arguments? Yeah, basically. Oh, it's it's a t- it's a terrible, terrible decision for any plot. Yes. So that's a good contrast to this because. Something I absolutely love in fiction, when it's done well, is just pissed off arguing between good guy characters when it's actually deserved. Yeah, see, in this part, in this part, there is actually a reason for them to be arguing. Like in Divide and Conquer, Robin and Cyborg were arguing for close to no reason, and there was no character basis in anything they were yelling at each other. Whereas yeah. this, Stephen does have a history of. You know, he has experience with the gems hiding things from him because they think they're not ready for him to know things or because they, you know, they're hiding things they're ashamed of. And it's inevitably led to him or someone he cares about getting hurt. So he has a very justified reason to be upset when the gems won't tell him. And whereas Garnet, you can tell, is visibly struggling with the horror of the futures she's seeing. And you find out why at the end of the episode. <laughs> I do love that just Stevens has dealt with so much that at this point he's legitimately like fucking angry at this. Yeah. And he has every right to be. So, you know, this is the point where the argument is justified. It has basis in things that have happened before in the story. They're not just throwing out random insults. In fact, they don't really insult each other at all. They're just saying, I'm angry about this thing you're doing and I don't want you to be do this doing this thing. You know, so yeah, it's it's a valid argument, and it does it visibly hurts both of them to get into because look, Stephen is so frustrated, and Garnet, you realize at the end um, after you know they've met Blue Diamond, Garnet is terrified of Blue Diamond, which is fair enough because you know her la- her Ruby and Sapphire's last experience in Gem Society was Blue Diamond threatening to shatter Ruby for accidentally fusing with Sapphire, accidentally becoming Garnet. Yes. So I think it's pretty justified that Garnet is thoroughly terrified of Blue Diamond, not to mention she brings up Blue Diamond finding out about the crystal finding all the crystal gems and because of, you know, seeing Garnet. That too. So Garnet is very much in a no-win situation through this argument, and like, and you know, like I said, she freaked out. Is like she's like, please, I can't tell you anything. That just makes me want to go more. Oh no, I made it more interesting. <laughs> oh, by the way, during the whole argument, I do love how uh, like Amethyst and Connie both kind of just kind of backing up a little, like whoa, whoa, <laughs> during the whole argument. I love everything about Amethyst in this scene. I mean, to get she's the first one to say anything about the book. She's just like, really, seriously, seriously, Stephen, you deserve to know the truth. And the truth is, I have no idea what that thing is. Never seen it before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That Amethyst is just eating popcorn. <laughs> yeah, where this. did she get popcorn? <laughs> Who knows? I, I, oh, I love Amethyst so much. <laughs> And there is a bit, you know, after Amethyst says that word, Pearl looks like she just loves the idea so much that she knows something that Amethyst doesn't, and I'm like, but is she evasive because she actually doesn't know, or because she doesn't want to tell? And Pearl does get really, really upset when the topic gets onto Pink Diamond, and it's, it, it, Garnet's little moment of concern over Pearl is really, really sweet about yes. how upset she is. But also just a lot of Garnet's expressions during the scene, she's clearly future visioning some really bad shit. Yeah. She can't do anything about it. It's no win. And I was really concerned. She straight up at one point says, I'm scared, I can't get near her. And I'm like, her? Which now I know her is Blue Diamond, but oh my god, Garnet is never scared. 
<laughs> Gwen is never ever scared. No. Well, except for that one time she saw uh, gem shards that used to be her friends sewn together and fused. Yeah, and that, that was deeply horrific. <laughs> so, you know, it's fair. But yeah, it is one of those wharf effect things. It's like if Garnet is scared, you know you're facing some bad shit. Yeah. But I did, I mean, it's all bad shit, but Stephen has every right to want to go, and he, uh, you know, he's really angry, and he cannot let it lie. So instead he goes to Greg, who is validating and supportive, and I love him forever. So Uncle Andy takes him to Korea, which, is, is that legal? As you do. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if you can just, like, hop a plane and fly, but on the other hand, I... I guess, this is back to my concern that Stephen doesn't legally exist, so he probably doesn't have a passport. <laughs> yeah. And when they go to Korea, first of all, I kind of bet that it's called Korea because it is, in fact, just Korea. I bet there's not a North and South. Well, there might not be. This, you know, alternate Earth might just be the one Korea. Yes. Full of t- tiny little old ladies who look just like Stephen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And the Steven Universe Animation Studio. <laughs> yes, that was the best. Oh, I, I, I died when I saw uh, just when I saw the concept art for Steven on the side of the pod, and Greg is just pushing Steven out. I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's some existential crisis right there. Wow. Yeah. No shit. It's like, oh, okay. Wow. That's one of my favorite fourth wall breaking jokes, honestly. <laughs> yeah, that was g- great. <laughs> By the way, why did why did they have T-shirts that just said red? Because it's a very unspecific thing to have on a shirt. Red. I, I feel like it's probably a reference to like a K-pop band or something, but Maybe. I don't know my K-pop very well. So, I honestly couldn't tell you. That's just what I'm assuming it is. Might as well be. And then they get to where the palanquin is, and there's, you know, blatantly a gem f- a fence set up by the gems. <laughs> I did like the little callback of gem ca- of Greg kind of falling over the fence and being like, oh, your dad can't climb fences like he used to. But yeah, it's it just... It is just weird that just Blue Diamond was just there. <laughs> I know, they just look at a bench and just fucking Blue Diamond is there. And that's why Steven's crying. <laughs> yeah. That, but that is a weird thing. I'm not even sure how that works, even in context to everything. Like, because, like, even when he's awake, her tears would still, like, also happen with Steven. It was very odd. Though it does explain why the tears were so giant. I know those were Ghibli sized tears. Yes. But I I am curious about how he's channeling Blue Diamond's emotions. Like what and why? Cuz that's not explained to at the end of this episode just that that's why he's crying. He's crying Blue Diamond's tears. <laughs> tears, tears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's one of those alien things they do is they cry to you Cause, yeah, well I mean the first thing they do is they see a blue palanquin and I'm like holy shit is blue diamond here and they look at a p- book bush Christ I can't do words and well I mean at this point my notes are just incoherent screaming cause it's just you know fucking Christ blue diamond is visiting where P- pink diamond died and she's crying about it and she took Sorrow is so overwhelming that Steven is crying about it and just oh my god Blue, and we finally get to see Blue Diamond's face yes like we you know people have been theorizing it ever since the answer because she's got most of her face hidden and actually on that note I am curious if her appearance has changed in the past 5,000 years because her whole exp- her whole expression right now is pure sorrow and I'm wondering if that's, you know, a result of 5,000 years of grief weighing down on her. Cause, Perhaps. you know, maybe. But she's, Jesus Christ, Blue Diamond, and she's still flicking. Have I talked about how much I love how flicking giant the diamonds are? Because <laughs> it helps with this whole aspect of coming off as divine, basically. 
as literally greater than you. So overwhelmed because Blue Diamond. And the whole conversation between Greg and Blue Diamond was... I really enjoyed this conversation, actually. It's also basically dramatic irony 101. <laughs> it is, but... yeah. Like, because like Blue Diamond is actually, like, like, sympathetic in a way to the whole thing. But even though Rose is the one who killed Pink Diamond, so, uh... Yeah. But, I have to say, Greg sympathizing with Pink Di- with um, Blue Diamond, also, basically just, this is exactly where Steven's ultimate purity comes from. You know, he's... He's reaching out to this person who is like, just because she's sad, even though she's theoretically an enemy of the planet, this person is there and she's sad and Greg is genuinely empathizing with her. Which, you know, just, it, it's exactly where Steven gets it from and it's nice to see. It, it's like, people go on and on about how great Rose Quartz was and how kind and caring she was, but he definitely got it from his dad too. Yeah. And also just Blue Diamond's expression of wonder when she's talking about, you know, the planet being destroyed and she looks at Greg and it's like, you don't deserve that, do you? She, like, she's so openly surprised that a human can feel complex emotions, which (laughs) is, like, it's so condescending, but you're also just like, they they really know nothing about this planet, do they? No. And then she decides very kindly to save him from most annihilation by kidnapping him into space. As you do. As you do. Right in front of his fully horrified child. And it was it was cool to see the arm ship design again, like except it's not you know, it's not just a hand this time, it's a full length arm. That is kinda interesting though. I'm really curious now about like was about Peridot ships a green hand. Like was was that a part of a bigger ship? Or, like, was it just green because a Peridot was piloting it? Or, why are they all hands? Why are they all hands? Like, uh, I don't know. I thought I guess there's just, like, maybe there's just, like, one giant ship, but, like, with, like, a dozen hands, each of a different color. That would be so cool. And Blue Diamond's like, you know, it's, this one's blue. Might as well. <laughs> it makes sense. It It's so me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's and then the episode ends with Greg kidnapped and to be continued, more or less. Basically. Just, oh, why are alien women so fond of Greg Universe? They just they love him. But uh, you know, I also in this episode just like horrified for Greg, but on the other hand, just like we're going to space to get Greg. Yes. Go to space. 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 Go to space. On trial. Guilty. Guilty for being in space. And I am also, you know, at the end of this, I was also curious, like, Blue Diamond's talk about the cluster like it's still active, so, like, is it still dangerous? Or do they just not know? I, I, they clearly don't know. It's pretty clear they don't know. Other thing I'm curious about is what exactly is the nature of the relationship between the diamonds. Because, like, are... Are they sisters? Are they close friends? I, I mean, Greg compared it to losing Rose, but it doesn't necessarily mean it was a romantic bond. Or is it? Are we dealing with, like, polyamorous space goddesses? What's going on here? I want to know. I want to know. Rex Sugar is very good at this with this show, where it's like every every tiny piece of world building or information she gives you immediately makes you want to know a thousand more things about the universe. Yes. But yeah, I've, I'm not sure there's anything else we could say at this point. Just that this is a hell of a way to kick off a Steven bomb. Yeah. And like, originally I was like, maybe I'll watch them one or two at a time just before we record, and then I saw this and I was like, no, I'm watching everything now. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But yeah, on to the next one. <laughs> 